Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's me, your boy, Malik, from Pinnacle Studio Pro, doing big things for all my Pinnacle Studio peeps out there. I got a request on one of my videos to make a lower third in Pinnacle Studio 18 Ultimate. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a lower third, and I'm gonna just do a basic one this time. Now as you can see, you're gonna need a photo editor called paint.net I have paint.net open on my screen right now and this is a free program that you can get from getpaint.net all right it is free also you're gonna need to download some effects there are a bunch of different types of effects you can get for paint.net I have the megalo effects plugin pack and the Attila pro plugin pack so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the actual lower third background. The well, first thing we need to do is go to file, new, and we're going to make this 1920 width and 1080 height. The reason why we're doing that is because we want it to be exactly the resolution of a HD video. If your videos are not HD, if they're 1280 by 720, then you should make your pixel size 1280 by 720. If your resolution is something different, then make your resolution match the aspect ratio and pixel size that we are creating here in paint.net. Because I have full HD videos, mine will be 1920 width by 1080 height. So now I'm gonna click OK. So we see that we have our first background. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer and add new layer. Now that creates a transparent background. So what I'm going to do here is click on my paint bucket. And in the colors, I'm going to choose gray. And I'm going to click on this background so now the background that was transparent now is gray and we just have this as a way to be able to see between our lower third and the background and you'll see why in a minute because there's going to be some elements of white in the lower third so i'm going to go to layers add new layer And I'm going to go to the rectangle select. And I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to start over here outside of the background. And I'm going to make it a little bit above the bottom of the screen where I have some space between the bottom of the screen and a whole lot between the top of the screen. So you'll see here that I go out. And I'm going to go past halfway because this is how I want my lower third to look. And I think that's good there. So now I want to go and click on the paint bucket again. And I want to select a color that I want my lower third to be. You make yours whatever color you want it to be. That's good for me. I'm going to click on this rectangle section. Now I have a color that I want. And now I want to make this into a gradient, so I'm going to click on the gradient tool. And I'll put my little cursor here at the end. Left click, hold down my mouse, and drag it across as far as I want it to go. And I think that looks pretty good there. Now I need to deselect this. crazy rectangle so I'm gonna just click on the lasso tool and I'll click in the gray and now I've deselected it didn't really make a lasso I was just using that to deselect the rectangle selector if anybody knows the better way to deselect that let me know in the comments below all right so next I want to add a little bit of flair you guys know me you know I love to add my flair so 
This is kind of boring and regular. I mean, I can add shapes to it. I can add all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to make a basic one, but I am going to add a little bit of flair to it. So I'm going to go to effects. And this is where those plugin packs I talked about come in. I'm going to go down to object. And I'm going to go to the second outline object. You can see it already made the settings that I wanted because I had these settings earlier. I want a white uh, 10 pixel stroke going around the whole lower third. Now, this is what I want. You can make it different, do whatever you want to do with it, blend it differently, all of that good stuff. All right. So you just set your width, your softness, set the color that you want. And then if you want an angle, you can set an angle on it if you want to make the stroke disappear on the bottom part of it. Like if I was doing a, a news ticker, I might put my stroke all the way down to 90. And then I might make the width bigger and have that as a news ticker. Maybe have a different color on the bottom one so that I can have text go across there. So that would be a nice little way to create a news ticker. Same thing could happen if I wanted to create a little separation. I can move it to the top and I use the bottom as a news ticker. So it's really up to you how you want to do it. But I'm going to turn the angle off and just have it all the way around and move this back down to 10. And so now I'm good. So I'm going to click on OK. And now I want to add a bevel to this. So I'm going to go to effects. Go back to object. And bevel objects. And once again, these settings are all set up the way that I wanted them to be because I had, of course, tested this before I did it. I'm not a dummy. Always test your tutorials out before you bring it to the people. But you can see that it previews and added a bevel to my lower third. So I'm going to click on OK. And it'll create the bull. And now everything is beautiful in the world today. So this is all I'm going to do for this basic one. So now what I'm going to do is go over here to the layers and I'm going to remove the gray layer and I'm going to remove the white background layer. And now we can see that the checkerboard show up. The checkerboards mean that this will all be transparent. All of this checkerboard will be see through when I apply this image into my video. So now I'm going to go to file, save as. And I'm going to choose to save it as a PNG image that will make the background of this image transparent. And the only thing we'll see in the video is the lower third. And then I click on save. And I want to leave it on auto detect for the bit rate and click on OK. And I will go ahead and let it flatten this into a single layer. And that's it. Now we need to do is go into Pinnacle Studio and make this lower third come to life. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 18 Ultimate. The first thing I want to do is show you an advanced title that I made. So I'm going to drag this save title down into the timeline. And if I scrub over it, you can see that the lower third comes onto the screen, but it's animated. Here comes the thing of the earth coming across. Comes another element that I added to it. And then my logo. And then the text. And then I have all of these things go off of the screen as well. So basically, I went ahead and created a lower third that is animated, and I saved it in the Pinnacle Studio, and you'll be able to do the same thing. So I'm going to delete this off of the timeline. First thing I want to do is open up the location where I saved 
the lower thirds that I made in paint.net. So here are the lower thirds that I made. I have them open on a location here to make it easier to access them when I go into my titles. So I'm gonna place my playhead where I want. I'm gonna activate the track that I want to put the lower third on by clicking on that track. And then I'm gonna click the create title button. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring one of these pictures into the title. So I'm gonna left click the lower third that I want to use that's over here on the left and I'm going to drag it down into the layers and I want to put it on the layer underneath the words your text here now I can see my lower third way up here but of course I need to size this up so remember when we made it 1920 by 1080 to match my resolution it's going to come in handy now because when I line this up, it'll fit in the video perfectly. So that's good. So now I have my lower third where I want it to be. Next thing I want to do is I want to move my text where I want my text to be. So I'm going to click on the text layer to activate it. And I'll type in whatever text I want. And then I will place my cursor over the text until I see a crosshairs left click on it and drag it down to my lower third now if i want it to be longer then i need to go ahead and make sure that the wrap text is correct basically i don't want it to be orange if i click on this i got to make sure that it's white and if it's white, then I can left click on the edge of here when I see the two arrows and drag it out to the size that I want. If it were orange and I try to drag it, it would just make the bounding box bigger. Now I want to add the animation to it. So now I want to click on a layer that is the picture, which is the bottom layer to make sure it's active. And I'm going to go to motions. And I'm going to go to enter. Now for this one, I want it to come from the left to the right. So I'm going to do page from left. And then it, if I hover over it, you see the animation. So I'm going to choose that one. Now I need to choose the animation for my text. So I'm going to click on the text layer. And when it's orange, I know it's selected. So I'm going to choose enter as well. I can have it enter however I want, whether I want it to fade. Um, I could do words from infinity if I want to. I could do however I want to. So I'm going to choose words from infinity. That's for the heck of it. Now, if I scrub this, I want it to actually make sure that the lower third comes on before the words do. So the words are coming in too early. So what I could do is place my cursor over the beginning of the text layer so I see two arrows left click and drag it and as I drag it over you see that the timing changes I think that's good so if I play this now it's gonna play kinda fast but there you go Got my lower third and I can just leave it like it is and have it fade out, fade out at the end. Or if I want to, I can add a ending motion. So if I click exit, maybe I just want it to fade, fade away. So page fade. 
Let's do page fade. And I will add a page fade to both of them. And have the page fade start at the same time by moving this pill, left clicking, dragging it to the same position as the one above it. Which means they will both fade out together at the same time. If I click on play, you got your lower third. So I can make this lower third longer. If I just scrub it, you'll see how fast it is if I just play it. It's pretty fast. If I want it to be longer, then I just place my cursor at the end of the title. So I see a line and an arrow, left click and drag it out. Now, the lower third is longer and it'll play slower. If that's too slow, just put my cursor here till I see a line of the arrow and drag it back the other way. All right, so we got our lower third made. So I'm going to right click on the lower third again and go back to edit title because you don't have to do this every time. You can actually save your title so that next time you want to use it, it'll be there. And all you got to do is change the text. So to save it, all you got to do is go up to once you have it open in the title editor is go to file and save title as you give it a name and click on save it will automatically put it in the correct place where all of your saved titles are click on OK and now if I go to my titles which has all of my saved titles I'm gonna click on that you see the title that I just created. It's saved in there with all the other titles I created. Lower third in your face. If you like the content that I'm bringing to you, make sure you hit the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Also, leave me a comment, ask me questions. Tell me how things are going on your side of the world. Whatever you want to do. Leave me comments. I'll always get back to you. And of course, if you want regular Pinnacle Studio love on a regular basis, you got to subscribe to my channel or you're going to miss out on some of the great videos that I offer you. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the tips and tricks for Pinnacle Studio. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.